So the aim for this next video in the playlist on set theory is to discuss the Kuratowski construction of ordered pairs. So this video follows the preceding video in the playlist where we introduced axiomatic set theory, introduced zanello frankel set theory. So what we now want to consider is if we have a set A and a set B that are allowed in our new freshly defined set theory, in our zanello frankel set theory, we want to try and bring across the concept of the Cartesian product, which we know and love from naive set theory. We want to bring it across into our new fresh theory of sets. So firstly, just remember or recall uh, from naive set theory that the Cartesian product of a set A with a set B is equal to the set of all ordered pairs where the first element little a is from the set big A and the second element in the ordered pair, little b, is taken from the set big B. So to give a concrete example, let's let the set A equal the set containing the symbols 1 and 2, and let's let the set B equal the set containing the empty set phi, and then another symbol sigma. Then uh, we know that the Cartesian product of these two sets, the set of all ordered pairs, is going to look like this. So we have the two ordered pairs with one in the first position and both of the two options for little b here from the set b and then we have the two ordered pairs where we have the second option from set a in the first position so two and then the two options uh, from set b here so those are all possible ordered pairs of elements from a and b and that whole set of them is then called the Cartesian product or at least was called the Cartesian product in naive set theory what we want to now do is try and construct something like this uh, in our new theory of sets and the crucial idea is that we don't want to have to define anything new, we want to be able to do it in terms of what we've already got. So remember when we were defining zanello frankel set theory we took certain things as atomic, certain things as fundamental, we took the whole idea of a set, the definition of a set, as atomic, and we didn't try to break that down. We also took the idea of being an element of a set as atomic and fundamental, and we didn't try to break that down any further. We don't like making things atomic. We want now, out of those atomic assumptions, to be able to build everything else, if possible. We don't want to have to make some new atomic definition in order to define the Cartesian product, in order to define these ordered pairs. And thankfully we don't have to, we can construct it all out of stuff that we've already got. And that is what the Kuratowski construction is, the way of encoding the same information that is in these ordered pairs from naive set theory in terms of sets that we have allowed in our new theory of sets. So how do we do this then? Well, here is the answer. These are the things that are going to be ordered pairs in the Kuratowski construction. These are the Kuratowski construction of ordered pairs. So let's have a look at them. So we've taken some examples. So for the ordered pair 1 by, the way this is actually going to be constructed is it's now going to be a set. Of course it's going to be a set because those are all we've got. And it's going to be the set containing two sets. One of those sets is the set containing the element 1 and the second set is the set containing 1 and 5. And the reason that this captures all of the information of this ordered pair is really all the ordered pairs capture, the information encoded in them, is 1, which two elements there are in the ordered pair, and 2, which order the elements are in, because, uh, for instance, 1, 5 is not the same thing as the ordered pair phi 1, and indeed this isn't even an element of A cross B, it would be an element of B cross A. So those are the two crucial bits of information encoded in this, which elements are part of the ordered pair and the order that they're in, and this can capture that just as well. So it captures the two elements that are in the ordered pair, but it also, by having this bit here, captures the order because the set containing just one of the elements, that element that's in that set is going to be the first element in the ordered pair, and then when you go to the set containing two elements, the second element that wasn't in that first set that's going to be the second element in the ordered pair. So it captures the information of the two elements in the ordered pair and the order that they're in. So 
if you then look at this other ordered pair from B cross A, it would be encoded by a different set here. It would be the set containing the set containing phi and then the set containing 1 phi. You don't need to change the order of phi and 1 in here because, of course, the order of the elements in this set don't make any difference. They're the same thing. Uh, but crucially, this overall set is not the same as this set, and that's how we encode the order that the elements are in in the ordered pair in this new construction in terms of sets. So again, this is how you Kuratowski define an ordered pair. So we're going to say, we're going to call this now this symbol. So how do you construct then the Cartesian product in a new theory of sets? So let's say again that we start off with the set A and B, and we're assuming that these are sets that are allowed in the zamello frankel set theory. And of course, these two look perfectly credible. They're going to be allowed in zamello frankel set theory. So then if we want to construct the Cartesian product, the way that we do this is we want the set of all of these uh, relevant Kuratowski ordered pairs. So the way we get those is we firstly start by unioning the two sets together. And we know by the union axiom that the new thing that we get is allowed in our theory. So we'll then get this set here. Then what we do is we take the power set of that, because remember, we want sets containing these, these subsets of elements in this union. That's the reason we've unioned them two together, because we want to get the elements of A and B in a set together so that we can get subsets containing elements from A and elements of B together. So we then know that the power set of A union B is also going to be an allowed set within our zamello frankel set theory because of the power set axiom. So the power set is a huge great set for this set. I haven't written all the elements out, but things that are in here are, for instance, all the sets containing the single elements of the singleton set. So the set containing one, the set containing two, the set containing phi, the set containing sigma. Then we'll have all of the sets containing just two elements. So here are a few of them. So we've got the set containing one, two, the set containing one and phi, the set containing one and sigma, then the set containing two and phi. We don't need to put the set containing two and one again because that's the same set as already is here, but we do need two and phi. We haven't got that one yet. Then we'll have two and sigma and then so on. You'll have uh, phi and sigma as well. And then you'll go on to the sets containing three elements. And then finally, you'll have the set containing the full thing. Then, to get the Kuratowski pairs that are relevant for A cross B, what we do is apply the subset axiom, which says that we can take any subset of this using any rule we like, uh, and it will itself be a set. So that means that we can, for instance, to take this subset, we can say we want all of the elements from the power set such that that element is either equal to this element or it's equal to this element, and so on for the other Kuratowski pairs. So you can see I've taken these four, these are all subsets of the power set, and they're now going to be allowed sets within our zamello frankel theory. And you can hopefully appreciate that these are the four Kuratowski pairs that are relevant for the Cartesian product of A with B, so it just fits in the screen. So this one here, 1 phi, this is this Kuratowski pair here. 1 sigma is this one here. 2 phi is this one here and two sigma is this one here. Remember again, it's encoding the information of which two elements are in the ordered pair, and it's also managing to encode the information of what order they are in, because of the fact that the one that is in a singleton set by itself is the first one, and the one that isn't, and is only appearing in the set with both elements in, is the second element. What we want to do next is put great big set brackets around this and call that set the Cartesian product of A with B. In order to do that, we're actually using the pairing axiom because we use the pairing axiom to say all of these four are sets. So by the pairing axiom, we know from the previous video that we can then put a set inside another set of set brackets and it's still a set, it's allowed within the theory, so we can put each one of these inside a set, and then we can use the union axiom again to union all of those four sets together, and then we'll get the set that contains all four, and that then is allowed within the zamello frankel theory. So we've constructed this set, which is allowed within our theory, and we're going to call that the Cartesian product of A with B. That's the Kuratowski construction of the Cartesian product. Then finally, what we say is, these are absolutely hideous notation. 
So what we want to do is use simpler notation. We want to rename them. So we go back to our old symbols for ordered pairs and we say we will call this this, we'll call this this, we'll call this this, and this this. It's fine to create new symbols for something. That's absolutely fine. We're not defining anything atomic there. We're just renaming things that we've already managed to construct. Just as in the previous video where we constructed the natural numbers using the Zanello construction. So we constructed those complicated uh, sets uh, that were allowed within our set theory. And then what we did is we renamed them using the symbols that we've used for years for the natural numbers. That's what we're doing here again. We are taking the symbols that we've used for years for ordered pairs and we're using them with, to rename the structures that we've just managed to create in our new set theory. So from now on, we will go back to using our simple, easy to write notation for ordered pairs. But it is important that you understand the Kuratowski construction of these, that these can be built out of the things that we have already got, that there isn't some de novo structure required. There isn't a new atomic structure required to define this. This can all be built out of the stuff that we've already got. Before we end the video, there is one final point that I just want to uh, tell you about, which is consider taking the Cartesian product of a set with itself. So we'll use as example the same set A as we had previously. The Cartesian product of A with A is then this. We know that from naive set theory. And the crucial point here that I want to talk about is these ordered pairs where it's the same element in position one as it is in position two. So this ordered pair and this ordered pair, because we need to consider what is the Kuratowski construction of these. So if we try doing the same thing as we've done previously, so the ordered pair one, one, it would be the set containing the element in the first position with the set containing both elements, which is then just the set containing one and one, but of course the set containing one and one is just the set containing one, because one is the same element as one. And then the set containing one is the same as the set containing one, so this is equal to just the set containing the set containing one. So this is what we use for the ordered pair one, one in the Kuratowski construction. Likewise for two, two, it would be the set containing just the singleton set containing two. Just to complete this explanation, let's consider taking or constructing the Cartesian product of A with A. Following the same method as we did previously, we want to union the two sets together that we're Cartesian producting. Now, of course, A union A is just equal to A, so it's the set containing one and two. And then we want to take the power set of that union. So we want the power set of the set one, two. And there's very few elements inside there. There are the two singleton sets, so the set containing one, the set containing two, there's the empty set, and then there's the whole set, the set containing one and two. Then we know that the uh, Cartesian product is going to be the set of Kuratowski pairs, where Kuratowski pairs are going to be subsets of this. So the uh, these two ordered pairs, we know exactly how those are going to be constructed. So they're going to be, this is the ordered pair 1, 2. It's this subset containing this set and this set. And then this ordered pair 2, 1, this is this subset, the subset containing 2 and the subset containing the set containing 1 and 2. Then for these ones, we really don't have that many options. So we have to use these subsets of the power set, the subset containing the set singleton set 1 and the subset containing the singleton set 2. So these here are going to be within our Cartesian product. And those encode all the information they need to. They tell us um, that there is only going to be one element in the ordered pair because otherwise there would be a set containing two elements and there isn't. Um, and we don't need to know order then because it's the same element in both positions. So it encodes enough information to tell us about those ordered pairs. So likewise, just as before, we would not use this notation, it's hideous. So we'd rename this, this, we'd rename this, this, we'd rename this, this, and we'd rename this, this, and we'd just accept our previous naive notation uh, as now having a thorough construction in our new zanello frankel set theory. So that concludes this video on the Kuratowski construction of ordered pairs. It's extremely important to understand this because ordered pairs and Cartesian products are going to be used to define relations on sets. 
And from relations, we're then going to define functions. So both of these concepts, we don't need anything new atomically defined. It can all be defined from the things we've already got because of the fact that there is this Kuratowski construction that defines ordered pairs in terms of things that we've already got. So this is absolutely brilliant, what we've discussed in this video.